Oscar voting just ended. That means it's time to do some Oscar predictions. Let's get into it. What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. It's my final Oscar predictions video where we're talking about all of the categories, but one. What? As always, it's not the movie I believe should win. We're going to talk predictions. What film I believe will win each category. And then every one I get wrong, you can hold me to it. Please don't. And today for each category, you're getting my predictions, but we're also taking a look at who the rest of the world believes is going to win each category because today's sponsor is Kalshi, and this is an opportunity for you all to get involved and bet directly on the Oscars. I thought this was such a beautiful pairing because this is the first legal financial exchange in the U.S. where you can bet on anything. So we're talking Oscars, Rotten Tomatoes scores, and movies. Look, betting on stocks is cool, but now you can invest in things you know about and love. They have hundreds of thousands of users and over $500 million of trading. And we'll talk about it in today's video, but what do the odds look like for Best Picture? When it comes to Best Actress, is there actually a race? Is Emma Stone still in the lead? It doesn't look like it. And I know trading can be scary. If you're wondering how this works before you sign up, let's look at the Best Actress race. Let's say you believe Emma Stone's going to win for Best Actress. It's currently priced at 42%. You can buy those shares at 42 cents each, and the price is going to change based on what the market thinks the odds are. If you buy 100 shares, that's $42. If Emma Stone wins Best Actress, you get $100. If she loses, you get zero. So basically you're betting on who you think is going to win in each category and that's that's pretty sweet. And of course you can sell your shares before the results come in. So if it goes all the way up to 80, you can sell 100 shares for $80 and make a profit before it actually happens because as we all know with the awards race, anything can happen. Like I said, not just Oscars, you can bet on Rotten Tomato scores, music, politics, and if you are interested, I do have a link down below. And the first 500 traders to use that link will get $20 in credit to do whatever you want with. I think it's worth it. And as always, bet responsibly and within your financial means. The first category we're talking about today is best costume design, and it may just be one of the hardest. And we're kind of split down the middle on this one. Kalshi, almost dead even, the awards expert app. Nobody can really come to a consensus, I believe. Uh, one movie is going to win production design. One movie is going to win costume design. Those two films are Barbie and poor things. And I think there's a good argument to be made for both. And honestly, I would even go in the opposite direction personally than what I'm about to predict. But I believe Barbie is going to take it for costume design. And I think poor things is going to take it for production design. Now, Austin, what's your reasoning behind that? Well, when looking at production design on call, see the odds are a little more in favor of poor things over Barbie. Not that I'm going to hold true to that every single time. It's always fun to go against the grain, but it just makes a little more sense in my head. Uh, the set design in poor things was a little more exotic and different, whereas Barbie, while really cool, and I thought that production design was great as well, a lot of people seem to be elevating the costume design a little more than production design, and somewhat vice versa with poor things over Barbie for this one. So I could be wrong. And honestly, there is a chance Barbie doesn't win really anything at the Oscars other than song. That would be, I think, shocking for a lot of people. But I have it winning at least one of them. And poor things, they're going to get the other. Nice. All right, next up we have Best Original Song. This is a two-horse race, and this is Barbie's best opportunity, in my opinion, to win an Oscar. It's going to win. It's just which song? I'm Just Ken from Gosling, or What Was I Made For? From Billy Eyelash. It just feels like Oscar voters, Academy voters, they're not going to take I'm Just Ken as seriously. Billy Eilish is a very talented performer. She's talked about countless times how much this song means to her. She was winning for a while. Now, recently, we did get a surprise with I'm Just Ken winning, but uh, I look at Gosling's Time to Shine as his performance at the actual Academy Awards, and I think uh, I think the other song's going to win, though. Then, yeah, huge advantage in terms of betting odds for what was I made for. Again, it's all about taking a song like that seriously, but it's not completely out of the question 
Maybe. Best sound design, again, combined into one category. I, uh, I'm i going to say Oppenheimer is the favorite to win this one. It got a huge boost from the Cinema Audio Society, the motion picture sound editors. But I'm not going to count out the zone of interest in its entirety. It's gotten a couple of wins for sound design, not as many as Oppenheimer. And I think Oppenheimer is the favorite to win a lot of these technical awards. But I can't really count it out. Other movies like uh, Maestro, no chance. Score! Do we need to discuss this? It's Ludwig Göransson's award. He's going to win. There's really no if, ands, or buts. I would say there is a a 99% chance. Am I going to go 100 with any of these? No, absolutely not. I'm not insane, but I would be insane to take anybody other than Oppenheimer. If it wins any of the technical awards, it will be this one, but it will win more than just this one. Let's move on. Visual effects. I am torn. I don't know what to think, how to think, why to think or if I've ever thought before. One of the big things to look at here is the Visual Effects Society, their influence on the Oscars, and the fact that Godzilla wasn't really nominated in multiple categories, so we can't really factor that in. We can just look at who won and why it won. And, you know, a month ago I would have said, and I did say, Napoleon has a really good chance because Napoleon is the most Oscar-ish movie of all of these films without Oppenheimer getting in this category, and it has the best chance to win. So if it takes visual effects and a photoreal feature at the Visual Effects Society Awards, it's going to win, but it didn't. Nyad. One over movies like Killers of the Flower Moon, John Wick, Society of the Snow, and Napoleon. Is the are we are you guys pulling my leg right now? Why why did Nyad why did Nyad win that award? It makes it makes no sense to me. It's so stupid. I don't get it. Who? I'm sorry. That was supporting visual effects and a photo reel feature. And this is visual effects and a photo reel feature. And the winner was the creator. It won over films like Oppenheimer, Indiana Jones, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Dungeons and Dragons. But here's the thing. Godzilla wasn't nominated there, and Godzilla is nominated here. Godzilla is a movie that is riding a high right now, uh, unlike any other film that I've seen across the board, not just with visual effects. And every time I see uh, the director walking around with that little Godzilla action figure, I'm like, That's, that guy's awesome. Is he awesome enough to win it uh, going against the VES Awards and the creator taking that one home? I, I sound crazy when I say this, but... Maybe. Maybe. Look, with some of these, I'm going to go with Rationale, and Rationale tells me that the creator has the best opportunity to win this award, but with others, I, I kind of have to go with my gut. And yes, Godzilla is the betting favorite at 56%, but I feel like that's a lot of people going with their gut. And I feel as if the creator is not only losing steam with us, but it may lose steam with voters, and voting just ended. So did they look at that surgence of Godzilla and say, all right, we're going to go here, or are we, are we just talking about the creator and that's it? And like the voters, they know visual effects better than I do, but when you look at the budget comparisons and uh, the assumed number of what Godzilla did that for compared to some of these other films nominated, and just the fact that everybody's talking about that movie right now, it re-released in black and white and was just as good, if not better. So I am, uh, I have to be different in some of these categories because it feels like everybody's nominating and, and choosing to win the same movie in every... I'm going with Godzilla. I have to. My heart says I have to. Bring it on! Bring it on! Makeup and hairstyling. I look at the Makeup and Hairstyling Guild Awards, and two movies did very well. One is Saltburn, which I don't see nominated in this category, and the other one is Maestro. Look at, uh, look at Bradley Cooper. It's a lot of makeup. Dan, normally, if your main character has that amount of makeup and it's being considered for other awards, which I don't know if Maestro really is, this is probably its only opportunity to get one. And while I feel like it could be a film to get shut out and poor things could absolutely take this and surprise a lot of people. And really, it, it kind of deserves it because the makeup and hairstyling throughout that film is amazing. But the main character in Maestro, the work that was done to Bradley Cooper, I feel as if they are going to reward that and fall in line with what has happened thus far. It's Cooper's time to get that Oscar. Wait, he doesn't get it? Oh, it's not his time yet. How about editing and cinematography? Let's start with editing, one of the major precursors for Best Picture. A lot of it comes down to who is nominated in editing. Sometimes those movies have the best chance to win Best Picture, but then it comes down to who wins Best Editing. And I 
would be shocked if anything managed to beat Oppenheimer. Am I giving Anatomy of a Fall a slight chance, more than I think a lot of other people are, because most people have Killers of the Flower Moon or the holdovers behind Oppenheimer? Sure. But Anatomy of a Fall is a film that a lot of people are championing for editing. I just don't see a world where anything gets it over Oppenheimer. And the same could be said for cinematography. It just feels like it's Hoyt van Hoytema's time. He deserves it. It is the best cinematography of last year. I mean, across the board, it's incredible. The shots, the shot selection, the composition, the way it comes across. And it's funny because the editing and cinematography, they both go hand in hand in Oppenheimer. And I just feel as if the technicals, man, well, really, it's an Oppenheimer sweep across the board. Animated feature. It's interesting, folks. I, I wanted to do a separate video on this, like I'm going to another category, but then I'm like, yeah, it's, I feel like I'm just going to go with my gut at the end of the day, and my gut is telling me across the Spider-Verse. It did, you know, clean up at the Annie's, and it's gotten a lot of the precursor awards, but the Boy and the Heron has gotten a couple, and most recently the BAFTA, and so it's not out of this race. It's not a clean sweep. It's not, you know, Spider-Verse, let's move on. It actually warrants a discussion, and, uh, you know, normally the Annies go hand-in-hand hand with the Oscars, but lately the BAFTA has gone hand-in-hand hand with the Oscars, so do we go with more recent trends, or do we go with the overall trends, or do we go with the fact that the Oscars just don't normally reward anime films, even though this is one of the greatest anime directors of all time, and even though I, I feel like it's one of his weaker movies, this would be the perfect opportunity to say, here's your Oscar, you deserve it, and have deserved it for a long time. At the same time, for me, Spider-Verse is just far and away the best animated film in the year, so I would be a little agitated if it went to The Boy and the Heron, not that it's not a good movie, but again, we could be looking at a lifetime achievement thing. So I'm going Spider-Verse. I'm going with uh, what has been the favorite all year. But again, I'm going with my gut. This could go either direction. The odds are saying 69 or 35. I think it's a way tighter split than that. I would go like 60-40 at this point. Documentary feature, 20 Days in Maripal. It has won uh, a couple of awards as of late and kind of made it the front runner. Again, I never really know who the front runner is for documentary. I just kind of pay attention to right up before the Oscars. And if, if a movie's contending, sure but don't rely on me for this category. <laughs> International feature, pretty easy. It's the zone of interest. Now, I have heard a lot of people lately talk about Perfect Days. I think the zone of interest has a fantastic chance. It's got the Best Picture nomination, but my rationale for putting Perfect Days over Society of the Snow in that two spot is because of just the talk lately has been way more in the favor of that film, even though Society of the Snow is my personal favorite out of all of these. Let's talk about the screenplays. Things have never been more clear. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, it was kind of up in the air. It was like, can Oppenheimer actually swoop in and take this award along with all of the other ones that it's going to win? Does Barbie have a shot now that it moved to this category? But I have seen the light, and the light is American fiction that just keeps winning these awards across the board. And I just don't see a world where Oppenheimer takes everything else as well. I mean, if it gets adapted screenplay, we are looking at one of the biggest Oscar sweeps in history, and we are looking at that anyways. I just feel like American fiction is going to take this award, not only because the screenplay's really, really good, just because of the way it has been celebrated recently, and it got a lot of love at the Oscars, and if it doesn't win one Oscar here, I will be a little uh, surprised, somewhat baffled, so this is its award to lose. Uh, if you look at the odds, 63% chance, and at 27 for Oppenheimer, 19 for Barbie, so a little closer than expected. I just don't see fiction losing it. An original screenplay is even more of a runaway victory for me. At the beginning of the season, or even when we got our nominations, I thought the holdovers would have a pretty good chance, but it hasn't really held its own uh, throughout the competition. I'm sad. I love the screenplay for the holdovers, but the screenplay for Anatomy of a Fall is the best part of the film, and a lot of people are looking to reward that, and uh, just the talk right now, I mean, a lot of the talk surrounding how cute the daggone dog is that played in the film, but the screenplay is pretty good too. That's why it wins. Look, I'm keeping it simple today. Don't need a lot from me. Supporting actor, 
and Supporting Actress. We do not need to spend a lot of time on either of these. It is RDJ's award to lose. He has been cleaning up this entire awards season. A lot of people, they were giving Gosling a chance and then Charles Melton a chance. And then now it's just like, all right, let's give Robert Downey Jr. his Oscar. And it works perfectly, right? Because he's had the career. He's been looked at a certain way his entire career. And now he gives the performance that everyone expects and he deserves this Oscar. So it's great to see him win it. Divine Joy Randolph has not had the extensive career that Robert Downey Jr. has had, but she had uh, almost definitively the best performance in that category because it's a weaker year, but also maybe the best performance in that movie. And so the fact that she's won basically every award but one tells me she's almost more of a lock than Downey is. But they're both locks. They're both winning. Let's move on. Best Actor. I was going to make an individual video on this about three weeks ago, and I'm glad I didn't because it is a runaway victory at this point for Killian Murphy. The only way things could have shifted in a different direction is if Paul Giamatti would have won, uh, well, anything. <laughs> like, dude, you couldn't win one of these and, and just make it interesting, do something other than the Golden Globe, but no, that's, it's, well... It's over. Am I sad that Paul Giamatti's not getting an Oscar? Yes. Am I thrilled about Killian Murphy winning? Absolutely. Killian gives one of the best performances of the freaking millennia. <laughs> Director Christopher Nolan. He's going to win. He's won everything. I mean, everything. You need to win to win this award. Who's in second? Doesn't matter. I would go Lanthimos. Who cares? It's Nolan's award to lose. This is a very simple video. This should be an easy Oscar season, barring a couple of these categories. Boy, imagine if he lost. How dumb we would all look. All right, you're going to be asking me, Austin, what about Best Actress? Why are you not talking about that? Well, I have a lot to say about Best Actress, and there are so many things that could go in either direction, and frankly, I haven't fully made my mind up yet, so I'm going to make a standalone video and just go into detail as to why I believe blank is going to win. It's one of the closest races we have seen in years, and frankly, I think it deserves a lot of time, so we'll do that here in a couple of days, but right now, uh, another really obvious winner here. And here's the thing about Oppenheimer winning and nobody really stepping up to the plate to say, hey, I'm in second place, I'm your biggest threat. No movie has done that. I'm putting Anatomy of a Fall there in that spot, uh, pr probably where nobody else is wanting to put it. Other people are saying poor things in American fiction and maybe Killers of the Flower Moon, I'm saying. But it doesn't matter what I say, because Oppenheimer is going to win. It deserves to win. It was the best movie of last year. I'm happy it's winning. I've never been this happy about a movie that's going to win Best Picture. Uh, frankly, if it doesn't win, it would go down as the biggest shock in Oscar history. But that doesn't matter because it's going to win. If it doesn't win, I'll do something crazy. What should I do? I don't know. Put in the comments section what should I do if it doesn't win Best Picture. Make it crazy. I'll choose the craziest option. <laughs> hey, I think Kalshi agrees with me. 95%, and there are 10 movies on this list, a 95% chance to win. That is ridiculous in a category of 10. It has never been this set in stone, this far out from the Oscars. Remember, if you want to trade with me on call, she get in that pinned comment or description down below. Follow my link, get $20, and remember to trade responsibly. Thank you all so much for uh, watching this video. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking in depth, in detail about Best Actress, and later this week, some really exciting reviews, a Dune 2 spoiler review, and boy, oh boy, we're getting close to the Oscars. We'll have more videos to come.